Two years ago, I would never in my life thought I'm sat around a table negotiating a deal of a purchase of a business that's turning over almost two million pounds. We built that up to a 16 million pound turnover business. We bought a couple of law firms. That's gonna be turned over about a million pounds a month. Every deal I've done has been in the format that you say works. Every deal I've done has been deferred. I've not paid anything up front for a business. I've just followed what you told us to do. And surprise, surprise, it works. So, Adam, uh, I want to hear the whole story. What's your background? And at what point did you say to yourself, buying a business sounds like a great idea? Always wanted to run my own business. Tried several different things. And everything I tried just didn't work. Um, and I don't know how I came across you, but it was on YouTube and you mentioned about one of your um, your courses. I think it was the, is it the quick start or something? Is the uh, fast track. Fast track. Yeah. So did that for the day and then enrolled on the kind of the course for the 12 months. The mastermind. Yeah. And again, probably not how it should be done, but didn't do anything for about three or four months. Um, and basically that was just down to fear. It does take courage to take that that first step and certainly when you're in the mastermind environment you've got the support and the community yeah. and, and I, I think the thing is as well the great thing with the mastermind is you're kind of forced into action because if you attend regularly you know every month going to the um going to the meetings and stuff like that there's nothing worse than sitting there and basically doing nothing while somebody that enrolled at the same time <laughs> of you has you know built a business group yeah and and it's true and i i remember phil you know, Phil, who did that amazing yeah. deal with the um, the haulage company and stuff like that, I was thinking, bloody hell, you know, why aren't I doing it? Do you know what I mean? I was like, right, let's get some letters out. And Jonathan, honestly, it's, I, I laugh now, but it's just like you say, just do it. Just send your letters out and just get going. And People will phone you, people have, will phone the, have the conversation, say the right things. 100%. And I just followed what you kind of told us to do. And I, I'm, you've not paid me to be here, I promise you. And I've just, I've just, I've just followed what you told us to do. And surprise, surprise, it works. Yeah. Okay. And that, that, that's, that's all I can say. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. So, let, so let's um, let's look at some of the, the the some of the things that you said. So, with the benefit of hindsight, I'm curious as to why you think those startups didn't get get going in the way you wanted them to. I mean, you know, in Mastermind, you talk about a deal team. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you talk about a deal team, but um, also the business, the group, whatever you're building, it needs a solid team as well. So you have your acquisition team, but you also need a solid team to run um, a business, I believe. And, you know, I'm not an expert at finance. I'm not an expert at managing sales teams. I'm not an expert at marketing. You know, no experience of this stuff. And I think when you're in startup mode, probably because you don't have a great deal of funds, you know, you're everything. I'm Absolutely. an accountant. You've got to I'm do a lawyer. A bit, because there's no one else. There's no one and, else. And, and also, you know, when you're the founder, you feel as though you need to do everything. There, yeah. there is that sense <laughs> exactly. of uh, because you don't want to sort of get other people. You don't want anyone to do it better than you as well. Exactly. And it's very hard to let go. Yes, it is. And um, and you know, you're you're effectively when you're in startup mode. I believe, unless you're a unicorn, you're buying a really badly paid job. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because absolutely, the hours are long. You're probably not going to get paid what you're worth or paid at all. Um, and, you know, and it, it, you just become fatigued. And, you know, I, I tried everything. I, I tried like, you know, five or six different things. Um, and I think just because it was me, no experience, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, started consuming your content and like looking at kind of some reviews from past, past students and things like that, that you had on YouTube. And you're thinking, do you know what? This sounds like a shortcut. And every deal I've done has been in the format that you say works. Every deal I've done has been deferred. Um, I, I don't think, let me think. No, I, I've not paid anything up front for a business. So, but yeah, are these tiny businesses though? I mean, that that's the, the question I think some people will be asking in their minds. You know, is this like a sort of a business that turns over £50,000 that you, you managed to scoop well, up? What, what you said on Mastermind was buy a small business, typically you're going to buy yourself a job because it just doesn't have the infrastructure to support management teams, et cetera. My first acquisition was an asset purchase. I think it was about £55,000. Um, there was there was two staff. It, it didn't even turn over £150,000. You know, I just thought that I couldn't speak to a business owner that turned over a million quid or something like that 
and they'd be prepared yeah, to sell. So these are limiting beliefs, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. 100%. So these, these are things that we tell ourselves, which actually do limit ourselves. We don't realise they limit ourselves. They do. And it takes someone else often to point it out. You know, again, on Mastermind, you know, a mirror's held up to you. Do you know what I mean? Are you a business owner and you want to grow via acquisition? Then you need to be part of my mastermind program where we hold your hand all the way through the entire process to make sure that your first acquisition is a resounding success. I've put some information in the video description below. So bought this little tiddly business and it was just like, why am I doing this? And um, I remember you, were, you weren't talking to me, but you were talking to somebody else on mastermind. You were like, why don't you just go for something bigger? That sounds like the sort of thing I'd say. Yeah, yeah. why don't you just do something, you know, and, and you, you were 100% right. It takes exactly the same amount of effort mm -hmm. to buy something big as it does small. And actually, when you buy something bigger, you're probably not going to have the headaches that come with a smaller business. So in answer to your question, first one, very small, and it was just a pain. Everything thereafter has kind of been your 500,000s, and then I kind of edged up to about a million, edged up to about 2 million. And, you know, over the course of about 18 months, we built a group of businesses that in in the um, in the insolvency sector, which I was operating in, that turned over over 16 million quid. We um, we bought um, a couple of law firms, and um, that business is on track. So, you know, the way we've kind of sorted things out, um, we've attracted investment, things like that. That's going to turn over about a million pounds a month. Um, oh right, that, so that's uh, that's pretty good. So you know, as I said, kind of. We built a group that it's not quite done yet, but you know, certainly 16 million turnover um, in the insolvency business and potentially a million pounds a month in the legal firm. And this is all kind of in two and, and, years. And, and in, in, a, in a two year time frame is, is absolutely incredible. What, what's the secret? Because, you know, what, what, what have you done that is so special that's allowed you? to do this i just applied myself and yes. and jonathan i was for the first 3 months of working with you 4 months sorry no first 3 months i did nothing so, so what was the turning point then so 3 months of inactivity watching listening to other people yeah what what was the turning point that made you say i've now got to do this well it was coming to mastermind sitting down on the chair and somebody that's been on the same kind of, sorry, enrolled on the course the same time as me, next thing you know, he's just bought a business for a million quid with no money down. And you're like, how's that happened? Next thing you know, turning up in a very nice car. <laughs> and you're like, wow, I can barely afford the train fare down. Maybe sometimes it is as straightforward as saying to someone, come on, you can do this. This is what you need to do. Go away and do it. And I'll see you next month. Yeah, yeah. Like if I can do it, anyone can. Well, you're 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 being uh, very humble about it, but you have got an energy and a, and an enthusiasm and a get up and go. Yeah. And and quite frankly, I think everyone needs to do that to be successful in anything in, yeah. in life. You need to sort of put yourself out there and actually go out and and, and do it. Uh, and you 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 built a, a sizable group, and I know that you've just completed on a on a deal of uh um well you you tell us all about that our goal now is um you know within the group is to effectively work with or target professional service businesses so that could be lawyers accountants all that kind of stuff um and effectively we want to um work with them give them a bit of tlc a fresh lick of paint so um uh business down in uh down in gloucester uh, an investor or a group of investors took the business from administration, um, worked with the administrator, and they've now done a great job of bringing the business up to break even, making a small profit. And, uh, you know, they just want to kind of pass it on to a, a fresh pair of hands and realize uh, their investments. Yeah, exactly. And, yep. um, you know, it's, uh, and through this training, you know, I, I'm now able to have conversations with these investors and work out a deal that works for them and also work out a deal that works for us. Two years ago, I would never in my life thought I'm sat around a table negotiating a deal of a purchase of a business that's turning over almost £2 million and getting a deal that works for everyone. You know, I think I'd be coming out not winning and so, they'd be so winning. really, this has been quite a transformational two years, hasn't it? It's been life-changing. I'm, I'm excited for you. Yeah. Because if this is something that you've always wanted, but you haven't had the route to get there, you now know 
that you can do this. Yeah. And you know, you've just closed on a on a deal that that's about two million, isn't just it? under two million in, in, in pounds, annual yeah. revenue. And and you've done bigger than that, and you will continue to do bigger than that. And then uh, at some point, you will have a cutoff where you, you might say, and this is my prediction, okay? Okay. You will say, I don't look at businesses that do anything less than twenty million a year. That would be nice. <laughs> and and then you'll you'll be you'll be up into the twenties, the forties, the fifties, because you'll realise that it's all about belief. It is. You're a hundred percent right. You know, I never thought. Two years ago, you know, the guy that sat there, and again, I, you know, I'm not just saying this, never thought, you know, sat, sat at my dining room table and I had to make a decision whether I had the money to invest in your course. Because obviously okay. there is a cost attached. And you're thinking, well, bloody hell, you know, do I have the money for this? You know, and then you're thinking, right, yes, I do. And for the first three months, my return on the investment was absolutely bad zero. Yeah. Because I did bugger all. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then actually, you know, apply myself and then things start to, you know, go very well. And lots of great opportunities have come from enrolling on this course. So you've learned a lot in a short space of time. Yeah. Let's see if we can help some people who are watching, listening to this uh, with the things that went through your mind at the beginning, how you overcame them, the things that held you back, maybe some, some tips and tricks for for people who are um, still at the very beginning of their of their journey, yeah. so let's start the ball rolling with what is, and I'm putting you on the spot now. What are the top three things that you've learned about buying a business that would be helpful to other people? Okay, um, it's it's buy the right one, okay. and, I, and and I know that's like you know blatantly obvious, but it's it's effectively following your you know, your your kind of steps to acquiring a business. So, so what is the right one? What okay. are the boxes we need to tick? So, okay, so I suppose to get to the right business, you need deal flow. Mm-hmm. You know, I send one letter out, I get one response, I've got one lead. I'm obsessed with getting that one lead across the line. You know, but that might be an absolute basket case of a business or, you know, it might not be kind of, you know, it, it might not be it might not be good for me. Do you know what I mean? So, so whereas if I've got, if I've got 10, 12, 15, 20 businesses, I can be more selective. Yeah. And and also, you know, don't think too small. I did it. You know, think too small. Mm-hmm. In my experience, acquire that business. You're either buying a job, mm-hmm. problems, mm-hmm. or a combination of both. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> job and yeah. a problem. That, yeah. That's the yeah. one you don't want to kind of have. And I think we do get stuck in this belief that we could only buy a business that turns over 150,000. Yeah. Uh, because that's kind of the upper limit of our of our financial world because most pe- most people the biggest numbers they deal with are in their property, don't they? So yeah, yeah, so yeah. so they they have a sort of a cap on yeah, I live in a property of a certain value. That number's yeah. the biggest number in my in my in my universe. Yeah. Where when you realize that buying a larger business is not only easier, it's going to give you a better return. And the only thing standing between where you are now and buying that larger business is what's in your head. Then for many people, that realization takes the brakes. Yeah. Off. So, you know, it's it's right business kind of deal flow. You know, don't think too small. And also deal team. The deal team is, is important. And, you know, I'm not an accountant. No, I, I, I've made a, uh, and again made um made an acquisition very early on, and I just loved the business, you know, and I love this business based on the brand, the logo, all mm-hmm, this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a pile of crap, and if I had someone actually going through the numbers, looking at the numbers, picking out things that I just didn't see because I was so blindsided by this amazing business, um, I wouldn't have made that acquisition. And again, the two acquisitions I've had to effectively give away. And it was all good because I bought them on a deferred basis. Were acquisitions where I followed this and not this? You followed your heart rather than your yeah. than your head. And the thing is, what what I've learned is in in the in the in the acquisition space, you know, in what you teach is we're here to solve a business owner's problem. Mm-hmm. Now, the majority of people we speak to, we cannot solve their problem, but you know, five percent of the people that we speak to, we can. Yeah, very, very interesting. So so what does the future hold then? What I want to do now with Pom Pom Group is um, is build, you know, a 
a group of businesses that specialize in roll-ups in the professional services space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're working with Jeff in accountancy mm -hmm. we're, we're speaking to somebody now we just signed heads um on a um on a law firm um and we're speaking to somebody there that we want to partner with to be the face of it because what what i found is in these industries you know i send a letter out i do get responses but i'm not a lawyer you know mm -hmm. a lawyer sends the letter out or an accountant sends the letter out next thing you know you get loads of phone calls so we're, we're planning to partner with people and you know just build a professional services group yeah. I, I think that a theme that we've developed in our inner circle meetings, which you're yeah. now part of. That's the next level. Which is the next level <laughs> after after Mastermind for people who've who've bought a business. It's no longer how do I do it? It's how do I do it better? How yeah, do I yeah. do it faster? How do I do it bigger? How do I raise larger amounts of finance? How do I integrate businesses? Because that's Yeah. yeah. That can be tough. And, you know, most of the problems that I have faced kind of post-acquisition is around people yeah. and getting this group of people here to work with this group of people Absolutely. here. It's a nightmare, if not done right. It's that, that integration piece is very underrated yeah. because all the excitement is I want to buy the business. But really, that's the easier part. Yeah. It's what do you do next where the challenges can be. And and I think for for us, we we learnt the um we learnt the hard way here because one of our acquisitions um that we did very early on, um, it was an amazing business. You know, it was really well run, um, you know, output was great. As soon as the owners left and we took over, it just bloody nosedived. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because the magic wasn't there. The owners were the magic. You know, they were the glue that held the thing together. And yeah, they never told you that, did never they? Never told us that. Yeah. And, but but again, Jonathan, did I listen to what you said? No. Yeah. So, well, so, I mean, to, you to, know. to be fair, you're always going to have situations where owners over-egg it. Yeah. But I'm not sure how you put that into a warranty. You know, if you are the, if you are the magic in this, in this business, uh, yeah. we will not uh, and, give you your, your money. I mean, it's, it's very hard to sort of, to, to include that. So it has to be around facts and figures. Yeah, yeah. So those earnouts are a great way of doing it. And 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 I think as well, in going small, when when you buy a smaller turnover business, mm -hmm. you know, smaller profits, all that kind of stuff, the owner is a big part of that business, if not the part of that business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas you, your bigger turnover businesses, your bigger businesses yeah. with bigger profits, it, it's, it's not, not going to rest on one person. So yeah, the yeah. smaller businesses, the owner is the best salesperson, probably the only salesperson. Yeah, yeah. They they do all the customer services and the issues and all of those things. They motivate the staff. They're there every day. Uh, and, and with the larger business, it can't rest on one person's shoulders. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah. So you want them to have broken through that barrier. So my focus with everyone in Mastermind is make your first acquisition a million plus. Yeah. And I, I think I think that's imperative. Because especially as well, you know, with a million with a million pound turnover business, let's just say profit margins are twenty percent. I'm just simple mm -hmm, math, mm -hmm. you know. So you've got two hundred thousand there. They're going into uncertain times. Let's say that dips to ten percent. Well that's a hundred thousand. Yes. Probably still can keep things going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And we don't know what's around the corner. Um You've got a 500 grand business that's kind of profit margins of 20%. Well, that's 100,000. And then that goes down to 10%. That's 50,000. <laughs> Paper thin margins. And then down. you need to hire a new MD. Yeah, yeah. Who's yeah. on 65,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's we're now, it. We're now behind. That's it. it. It's picking the right target from the start. Because the thing is, you know, I wasted many an hour speaking to the wrong type of businesses. And you send a letter out, people will phone you. Absolutely. And, and, and to be fair, and, and to give you credit, at the start, no one knows. I mean, no. your, your, your conversation becomes more finely honed as time yeah. goes on. So you go straight for the juggler with the top three questions that you need to ask. Yeah. And if it's a no, 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 then thank, thank you, you but much. goodbye. Yeah, yeah. Where you probably at the beginning we're too polite. We we want to give them time. Yep. We don't want to we don't want to mess it up. So we we spend an hour on the phone with them at where we should have only spent five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. yeah. And that, that that's the thing. But that that comes with time and you know and and practice. And the the hardest deal you'll ever do is your first. Mm -hmm. Very true. Um, the second hardest is your second, and then from three it 
kind of it's yeah. it's it's habitual so because i know sometimes people say well i couldn't i couldn't buy a business because i've never run a business before well you don't need to because you're not going to be running it yeah, yeah. that's the whole that's the whole point that's the thing you're becoming a shareholder in a business and as the shareholder you get your share of the profits if it, you're 100 percent shareholder you get 100 percent of the profits yep. and <coughs> other people operate and run the business probably the same people are operating running the business before you bought it and they just carry on yep uh, but you're the new it's like becoming the, the new owner of a property and the tenants start to pay you rather than the previous owner and and is again i was i was talking to my uh, my partner about this and tom was saying so let me just let me just ask you a question he said because this doesn't sound right is this the case he was like so you buy a business <laughs> effectively on a buy now pay later and you're paying yourself a a consultancy payment or mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. salary from day dot and it's you know usually kind of somewhere around six figures he was like and the old owner is okay with that i was like well one the old owner isn't there because we've done this deal mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they're now in the caribbean or playing golf or spending time with the grandkids or, or whatever and yeah that's kind of what happened and he's like it just sounds too good to be true i was like doesn't it <laughs> but it's true <laughs> so when people watch this and listen to this uh, they often are sitting on the fence. Yeah, yeah. And they say, do I do this? What would you say to those people? So if you come into if you come into Mastermind or, you know, any of your programs and you pay the you pay the you know the registration fee or, or whatever and do nothing, you will hundred percent get nothing. Of course. Because I've done it. <laughs> Whereas if you come in, actually apply yourself, do what you say. Don't waste three months like I did. Just get on. Yes. You know, you'll get results. And the great thing is with Mastermind as well, which I loved, is that potentially you can find people there that you can partner with. You can, you know, there's WhatsApp groups, there's, you know, all sorts of kind of things. There's loads of support. And if you don't know the answer to a question, you or one of our peers or whatever, they're there to help. So so it, it's it's all about you're not doing this by yourself. Yeah. Doing anything by yourself is hard. It is. Well, when you have support, like having a personal coach, we keep coming back to fitness, but having a personal personal coach, it, you, know, you become accountable. Yeah. And when you become accountable, you do more than when you are only accountable to yourself. I'm 100%. And, you know, it's, and there's nothing worse, I say this all the time, than sitting there and you're seeing the people that have been enrolled at the same time as you getting results. And you're like, why am I not getting results? Oh, yeah, that's because I'm not doing anything. anything yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, it, it works point. if you work it.